Yes, stop recording. Hello, everyone. I'm Zach Klein, and I am recording a brief demonstration of a game called Cyrillum Ultimate today. Um, it is Halloween, and um, I just wanted to get this demo out while I have some free time. Um, it's basically a game that is kind of like uh, Pokemon, I guess is a decent comparison, except with the depth uh, taken way up, there's a lot to do. And basically you spend most of your time uh, battling with several, uh, I think it's about a thousand, maybe more creatures in a uh, kind of uh, randomly generated, uh, they call them realms, but they're basically like uh, dungeon levels, I guess. Um, anyway, this is a demonstration of a mod that has been recently uh, released called Cyrillum Access. I'm going to just basically be walking through a bit and showing what the mod is able to do and how it works. Um, I am going to be using my existing save file because it's a little less um, constraining than uh, using the tutorial, running through the tutorial. So okay. that being said, uh, I'm going to slow down NVIDIA. the speed Preferences of settings. NVDA so it's a little easier for people to understand. Settings. Should have done that before we started. NVDA settings. General. I'm not Speaking a properly. professional uh, video recorder, video slash demo recorder, so I apologize. Okay. Uh, Let's reduce it. 85, down. 75, 65. 70, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, is a bit CPU intensive. I have run into at least one person who struggled to run it on a fairly low end computer. Um, just bear that in mind, particularly if you're running a laptop or whatever that is underpowered and not very uh, not very suited for games in general. Hopefully, it'll be not as big a problem as I uh, think it might. A biggest the biggest okay. issue is that. Uh, Cyrillum itself is not demanding. The mod itself just the mod just takes time to capture uh, OCR and stuff. So anyway, Cyrillum access terminal blank. Cyrillum ultimate. Okay. Sound list. They're both running. It just said sound list. Um, that is the mod basically stop t indicating that it's ready to to go. I will hit uh, E in the Cyrillum ultimate window. E is basically your enter key. The map, the menu commands are a little idiosyncratic. You basically use WASD to move around, E to access a menu item or choose a menu item, Q to go back and open up the main menu when you're actually in a game, and F to copy things to the clipboard and occasionally open up notifications and stuff like that. So, E. Continue. You heard the mod say continue. That is the first menu item. To move down and up, you use W and S, like so. New game. Club storage. Show credits. Exit. Continue. So there are only... F New game. Club storage. Show credits. Exit. Continue. Five menu items. So continue. Eric Hell Knight. My character is a Hell Knight, which is basically a super attacking class, uh, kind of very beginner friendly. Uh, sometimes the mod reads the timeline. Sometimes the mod reads the amount of time I've been playing. Sometimes it doesn't. For the record, I have about 15 hours in this save so far. So let me just hit E. There we go. <laughs> now, I'm going to 
to pause for a moment, moment to talk about the sound you were just hearing. That uh, laughter is um, essentially one of the NPC noises. The mod essentially makes noises to indicate where different objects are on the map. Um, the NPCs are indicated by laughter. Teleportation, which you'll see in a moment, is indicated by a kind of Star Trek-y transporter type noise. Um, there are a few others. And this is one of the areas where a new mod installation is a little different. A new mod installation is designed or is set up so that it will only play the sounds when your character moves. I am kind of going back and forth on whether I think it's better to play it all the time or not. Um, I do not know, but if you're starting a game, if you're starting a game from scratch, it will only play the sound when you move around, which might be a little less annoying. I don't know how. If you're like me, you might find particularly the NPC sound kind of grating after a while, but that's why I decided to switch out of the game window for a moment to talk about this. But anyway, so basically, real quick, you start out in, whenever you load the game, you begin in what is called the castle. And uh, if you're playing the tutorial, you will basically have uh, um, a few tasks to get through. But if you're not, you basically get dumped into the castle and you have a few, few NPCs that you can interact with and um, things of that nature. It's essentially like your home base. You will always go back to the castle once you load a save game. There is no saving when you're in dungeon realms. So bear that in mind. That being said, the castle layout is pretty much, it's not as straightforward as it could be, but there are objects pretty much positioned at predictable places. So you can rearrange it to your heart's content later on, I'm told, but I haven't really done any of that aside from placing one other, one NPC at the far right hand edge, essentially. The castle and all other um, maps are grids. So basically when you hit the edge of a grid, you will hit a wall and you will not be able to go any farther. There is a noise that is made when you run into a wall. Um, one of the other things you'll need to do is go into game options as soon as you start a game and basically choose to have uh, movement sounds play. Because if you don't do that, the uh, character walking and wall bumping sounds will not be heard. So bear that in mind. So I'm going to quickly walk around a bit and show you what the mod does. I'm standing right next to an NPC. I move backwards. Notice the pitch changed. That little bump is the wall. And the higher pitch indicates that the NPC above, is above me. You always start next to your, next to basically the main, I guess, quest giver is the closest word I can come up with, NPC. His name is Everett. So, I'm moving up now. There, notice that as you move forward, the uh, audio changed got farther away and lower in pitch. And essentially, that's the way all the audio cues in this game behave. Uh, I just hit Q just to pull up something, but didn't mean to. Anyway, the uh, all the audio cues in the mod behave this way. They play at a lower pitch to indicate uh, to indicate whether you're above, when they play at a lower pitch to indicate that you are above them, higher pitch to indicate that they are um, above you, and kind of medium pitch to indicate that you are on the same row as they, as they are. This is important particularly for things like treasure chests in Realm, which you will pick up and deal with as along the way. So let me go up a bit farther. 
Actually, you know, let me show you something real quick. One of the new features this mod added recently is the ability to read some of the important game screens in a slightly customized way. Let me find the uh, fusion brazier. Essentially, a way to summon creatures, or the summoning brazier, a way to summon creatures for you, creatures to fight for you. You will be using this all the time. Kind of in the southeastern part of the castle by default. Hold on. You might hear that little popping noise to indicate that it's nearby. You've combined two of my creatures. Ah, that's the fusion character. That's the fusion NPC. Different. I walk up to him and hit, and bumped into him and hit E to interact. I went a little to the uh, little too far. That's one thing. Theoretically, the mod sounds can be customized. I would personally. I'm not personally a fan of the fusion sound, it's a little too quiet, but that's how it goes. Or of the summoning sound, anyway. I mean. Observe apocalypse, not press out the bitrate and trace the switch. Press me to the all available info. Press me to the all available info to the clipboard. Okay, this is the summoning bridge. And basically, the way that this used to work is you used to have to run OCR on the entire game screen to have this information read to you. Basically what happens now is you can run the OCR or you can run the interact with the brazier, the mod will read the menu item and then as you arrow up and down it gives you the opportunity to listen to the in all the available information about creatures as you interact with them. This is new as you interact with it. This is new as of today, and definitely improves the situation quite drastically. So, let me hit V. Creature name, Lemurian race, concoction class, chaos trait, material, Lemurian tail sources, caustic reactor, kingdom of emeritus, health, 34 attack, 19 intelligence, 19 defense, 22 speed, 12 traits, acid body trait, description, after this creature is attacked, it afflicts the enemy with disarm and sees one of the enemy's tail gems. That kind of thing. Um, that is mostly game mechanic stuff. You can hit C to copy that information to the clipboard. Copy the Lemurian creature info to clipboard. As I will show you. You can uh, hit E to summon one of these creatures if you so choose. I don't necessarily want one, but you might. And you can hit uh, Q to back out of the summoning brazier. And you can hit F to change the sorting mode basically, to sort the creatures by creature type, for example, or name, or any number of other, a few other methods. But basically, the summoning brazier is one of those screens you'll be using all the time, and the mod does a much better job now of reading all the information that's available to you. Backing up. That is a very useful new feature. Um, I'm just moving around. Let me go up and show you the uh, teleportation and show you what the battle screen looks like and demonstrate a um, actually before we do that let me demonstrate a uh, technique that you'll be using a lot to get information on your current on your creatures hit Q Character. to open the menu go up decoration mode options. to options Audio. I don't know why it's in options it could be could have just as easily been kept somewhere else. But anyway, go up again. Reset options. Export to data to clipboard. Export data to clipboard and hit E. Uh, again, just to be safe. I don't think you need to hit it twice, but I do it anyway. Run and then the name of the open up text, 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 WordPad or some other text 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 and paste. And then you'll see information like this. 10 equals character 10 equals. Eric the Hellmite. Achievement points 50 slash 4391%. I'm just reading down the Time screen. 17, 27, 47. Oh wow, I spent longer on this than I thought. Conversion, 0 0.11.5. Blank. 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 10 equals creatures, 10 equals. Level 14 unicorn vivifier. Unicorn slash life. Blank. Health, 152. Attack, 103. Intelligence, 79. Defense, 106. Speed, 80. Blank. Innate trait, reinvigoration. After this creature attacks, it resurrects a random ally with it. Blank. 
Artifact sword. Fourteen percent attack. Fourteen percent attack. Empty trick shot. Blank. Spell gems. Holy bulwark. Blank. And each creature is, um, each creature in your current party is uh, copied and basically has all their important information laid out here. This is incredibly useful, particularly as you uh, get more of the creatures and try to figure out what you want to do for any given uh, realm. So that is one way of, that is sorry, sorry, one of very useful thing you need to do quite often. And you can do it at any time, um, except I don't think you can do it in battle. I haven't tried, but battle has its own thing going on, as you'll see in a moment. Not human, two thousand, then. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Move north to the teleportation shrine and show you how that works and get into combat, which I will probably lose because this is kind of an unoptimized team for this latest realm that I'm in. But anyway, forward. That little transportation noise. There we go, and interact. E, and I'm going to run OCR to get the right. results document. Basically, the selected did it with two realm depths. Selected did it with realm depths. The higher your realm depths, the better your rewards. 17. Enemy level 17. Maximum realm depth 17. So I'm on depth. realm depth 17, which is essentially 17. Each level of the game, each level, um, level of the game, the characters get gradually higher up in level. And as you will discover at some point you and your characters stop leveling you and your creatures stop leveling up so it's or not stop leveling up but level up a lot slower than the enemy does so it's a game of like figuring out the mechanics that you want to exploit to win rather than being able to beat them using raw statistics that's one plan continue deeper yet into the swamp plans but your true test awaits just a bit further that was one of my, uh, one of the storyline characters essentially telling me what to do. But anyway, I'm here in this realm, and I heard a little noise indicating that I have a quest. Recognizing results document. Ah, alas, OCR is being difficult. But essentially, the way that quests typically work in this, oh, there we go. Oh, here's a battle. Didn't even ex didn't expect it so soon, but. Recognizing results of a hostile group of creatures led by Mighty Interloper Mighty Interloper. Or Might Interloper. I can tell. I'm doing nothing. I'm just sitting here watching the characters, uh, watching as the NPCs do their thing. But let me show you real quick what I was talking about. History. You're on attack, you have a battle menu here, you go to history, which is up from two, one up from the bottom. Hit Mother e, with and then hit F for copy, for some reason, hit F. Select. And then you can open Test the editor again, document word and with. paste the info into the clipboard. Servant and then Hunter Unicorn Vivifier. Servant Hunter, five star the enemy, Servant Hunter, five star. Unicorn Vivifier took 185 damage. Unicorn Vivifier was killed. Ancient spirits took 94 damage. Hunter's season. Ancient spirits never poisoned. Hunter's season. Pill is peasant took 42 damage. Hunter's season. Wow. Pill is peasant never poisoned. Hunter's season. Light hunter attacked ancient spirits. Five star the enemy. Light hunter. Ancient spirits took 146 damage. Ancient spirit was killed. Jesus. Brandy mother took 32 damage. Play one hunter. Crazed leopard took 32 damage. Play one hunter in. Brandy mother recovered 60 health men. Brandy mother recovered 60 health men. So basically, that uh, that is not a uh, an auspicious beginning to the battle at all. Um, this is also, admi this is admittedly fairly, um, not middle of the game yet, but, yeah. so it's kind of a little more, uh, advanced than some people might have experience with, but, or then you will have initially have to deal with, but bear that in mind. But basically all I wanted to demonstrate in this instance was the way the battle system, or was the way you could read battle results excessively basically so you'll be doing that a lot and if you lose a battle which will happen you can go into the main menu with q again and there will be a battle history option and you can do the same thing from there so you can always copy out the battle history 
to the clipboard and see where you went wrong. So, let me don't think about press. try to win this battle. I'm probably not going to, but I'll try. Mr. Fortens. Attempt. Pause and arrow. My interloper. And lock end. My interloper servant hunter. Now. Let's see. I'm gonna run OTR to see what I'm Cast. Defend. Remote. Macro. Pedian. Heft. Skip turn. History. Fort it. Akiola Leech's turn. Select an action. Ah. Akiola Leech's turn. Select. Akiola Leech's turn. Select an action. Surround him ultimate. For some reason, my screen isn't. The entire screen isn't being OCR. But I was expecting a timeline of some kind to tell me what creature I'm. What creature is going to act when? But I think that is probably either OBS's fault or the. something else. But. Whatever it is, basically, the way the battle system works is explained in great detail in the game's uh, codex, which is available on Steam or from within the game itself. Yeah. Okay. Servant Hunter. Ah. The last static creature is supposed to cast spells on the death of enemy creatures, but he was killed. So. And I died fairly predictably quickly. Um, fortunately, you better be more careful next time. Your fortune has been reduced to zero percent. Fortunately, when you die, all that happens is that your character's character. fortune, luck stat, basically, gets reduced to zero percent. No other consequences to speak of. You don't even lose any items you collect. So it's pretty much a slap on the wrist. So. That being said, the vast majority of the game screens are red, at least in terms of letting you select menu items, for example, are red. There could always be improvements in terms of like conveying information in a without need for OCR, like the Brazier screen. Um, I'm hoping that the mod will improve some of that. Character. But thinking. For now, let me just walk you through a couple of options you'll need to change immediately. Decoration mode. Options. Audio. Go Metal into... Test. Controls. Uh, display. Zoom. Display settings. And then go to display. And then go to zoom. And if you zoom go... Zoom later. Left and right, you'll find that zoom, zoom. is at... Zoom. zoom can zoom. be adjusted from... Zoom less time at zoom. Zoom less, zoom less, six, four, five, six. Zoom, I don't zoom. know what the maximum is. Zoom, zoom. Zoom less, two x greater. Zoom. Zoom one x is essentially what you need it to be set at. If it's not set at that, then none of the mod recognition will work. Um, in terms of understanding what the objects are around you, for example. Display. Except that. Gameplay. Then. Set. Game difficulty. I'm floating over world. Auto interact with menu of zero. Auto interact with object is useful. Basically, it lets you navigate by uh, bumping into things rather than having to hit the E key to interact with many things. You will still occasionally have to hit E to interact with some objects, but it does streamline things. Quite Metal animations. Loop display filter. Enemy fusion palettes. Show summon notification. Uh, Show knowledge no. I bet you the notification. Movement sounds. There's movement sounds. If that's not on, like I said, you will be a little confused because you won't be able to tell when you run into walls. There's a subtly different sound for when you run into walls for work versus when you interact with an object. Or when you run into an object you can interact with. So, you'll just have to get used to that. Okay, options. Decoration and that is pretty much all I have to show you today. Thank the you. mod works pretty much transparently behind the scenes. Um, it Character. Does read Second. a lot of Second. continue. Second. 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 It reads a lot of things, so um, mostly menu items. And I mean, the, the game is basically selecting things for menu items. 
reading screens and uh, getting familiar with creatures. And a lot of the game mechanics are explained in the codex, which is available on Steam or from within the game itself. And um, yeah, I mean, that's basically it. There's not a whole lot else to it. The intricacies of the battle system and stuff are much more kind of beyond the scope of any demo that I could provide. Um, but basically, uh, it's all down to your creatures, the traits they have, the stats that they have, spells that they can cast, and so on. But that's stuff that all the players have to deal with, sighted or not. So that being said, I hope this has been at least informative for people. And um, I am happy to answer questions or help as much as I can in other respects. But yeah. Signing off.